Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of Frogging With Me. Today's subject is going to be misting. So, um, you know, anything water related, misting, drainage, water features, drip walls, waterfalls, streams, ponds, nothing. Um, I'm going to get into all that, what I do and what works for me. So, uh, personally, you know, just water alone. I use reverse osmosis water, which, um, you know, you can also use distilled water. Um, but yeah, I, I have a reverse osmosis system uh, set up downstairs and that actually taps right into my Miss King system. I have two advanced pumps um, misting the entire frog setup, um, including the big tank that's in a different room. I have it all set up from downstairs. So, um, it's really convenient and I, I highly recommend Miss King products. Um, I haven't tried Monsoon or any, any other stuff out there, so I, I guess I could be biased, but um, it, I've never had an issue with it. And to me, I think that it doesn't get any better than that. Um, I've seen some of the other stuff, you know, but for the price and, you know, just the setup and how it works, it's, it's super easy to set up and it's, it's just, it's beneficial for the frogs, beneficial for my time. Um, I don't spend time, you know, opening each tank and pump spraying, misting anymore. You know, that, that stuff got annoying. So, um, and then the reverse osmosis system, I'm no longer going to uh, the grocery store to get, you know, gallons of distilled water uh, to, or reverse osmosis water to bring home every week, you know, 10 gallons of water a week. It, it's not hard, it's just annoying. And um, I like convenience. So, the reverse osmosis and the misting. That's two things that, you know, which the Mist King's cool. You know, it, it, it's, it's like a water feature in itself. It does look cool. So, um, you know, that, that alone, the misting and getting water, those are two things that were kind of annoying, you know, like throughout having frogs, misting the tanks, picking, that stuff's annoying. So I don't have to do that anymore. Um, it's just all self-automated and I love it. So I highly recommend that. Um, now, the Miss King system that I have, like I said, I have two advanced pumps that uh, they, I don't know how many nozzles I have, um, I think around 60, 60 nozzles maybe, um, is what I'm misting. And I used to have just one, and that was when I had uh, a five gallon bucket upstairs as my, my reservoir. And it worked fine, but just these tanks, I didn't have the big tank. When I hooked up the big tank, it was a little, it wasn't as powerful. And then when I moved everything downstairs, it was really weak in the big tank. Um, and it was weaker overall in these tanks. So I just added another advanced pump downstairs to just power the water up here a little easier. So basically it's going up, you know, from the basement floor to the ceiling of, of or to the, to the floor of this floor. That's already one floor. And then, you know, to where the height of the, these, some of these tanks are, it's basically running two floors basically. So... Uh, I just needed to add another pump, and once I did that, it solved all my issues, and I've had no issues since. So, um, getting into the, my schedule uh, for misting, I do every 24 hours, mine goes off eight times. You know, um, that may be a lot to somebody, but everything comes into play with uh, how much air, fil air, like, you know, air filtration your tanks have. Um, you know, you want to have good circulation for the plants, um, and it's, I don't know if it's beneficial for the frogs or not, but um, I, I wouldn't think it could hurt because they have pretty good circulation out in the wild, so, um, you know, but the plants do benefit from, especially certain bromeliads, they, they benefit from good air circulation, uh, orchids and stuff like that as well. So my tanks all are the Euro vent, um, Euro style tanks, they have a vent at the top and at the door, so they have really good ventilation. So, and I have two fans running in the room, two uh, box fans, and, you know, just to keep the, the glass kind of clear, um, for how much I do miss, you would think the glass, the tanks would be completely filled with condensation. So, running the fans helps, but also helps dry out the tanks. So, having all that done, um, eight times in 24 hours is not too much for me. It may be too much for you and your setup. You, you need to gauge it. Uh, if your tanks are soaking wet all the time, you're missing too much. Uh, if they're dry all the time and you're not misting enough, you know, it's it's simple simple science <laughs> um, So right now I'm in, with, with my setup 
uh, it's a good place. Um, you know, I've got it, with, and, and all my tanks are the same. Not the bottom row are the same as the top row. Everything, it's all the same. So I only have one timer. So I just, I want them all on the same schedule. And I don't have any issues with certain frogs breeding and certain ones not breeding. Everything breeds for me. Um, so that's, and these are all breeding, breeding purposes I'm talking here for your misting schedules, you know, all that, all that stuff. These, you know, hobbyists that they're just, um, you know, collector, you know, they just want to have them as pets. You know, you maybe have different, different setup requirements, but you know, I'm talking in, in breeding situations and what works for me. Um, so yeah, that's, that's really my, my misting schedule. Um, these tanks all have, uh, uh, dual nozzles. Um, the big tank has a couple quads cause it's, it's a deep tank. It's 24 inches deep. So I want it to get full coverage. These are only 17 inches deep. So this, you know, I don't need any quad, quad nozzles. Um, they're all just dual. A couple of them I have drilled for two holes. So they have a, a single nozzle in each hole, but, um, yeah, that's, you know, I guess that, that's it as far as misting. Like I said, reverse osmosis water. You know, if you use, it, it depends where you're at. Some tap water is probably okay. Some tap water is probably really bad. You know, it, you can get really the, the calcified water on the buildup on the glass. Um, and it, it stains the glass. You can have that happen. Um, chlorine, stuff like that. You know, so I just use reverse osmosis. Um, but, yeah. Uh, so, and obviously it's not too wet. You know, my, my bromeliads aren't, aren't sopping wet and they're not dying. I've had some for six, seven years. Um, the moss grows well, obviously. You know, orchids do, do well. So, you know, I, I haven't really found a plant that I want um, that, that doesn't really do well. You know, some stuff just dies, you, it happens. But, uh, so that's it for, for misting. Now I guess I'll talk about water features in general. Um, you know, streams, ponds, I guess, but ponds can just be, you can make a natural pond that's just the natural runoff from your misting um, that goes through your substrate layer, filtration layer, and then goes into the pond. So I don't, you could call it a water feature. I don't know if it is. Uh, I'm talking water features that create a lot of humidity, like, um, like a, a stream, a pond, uh, that, a pond that has a waterfall going into it. Um, a drip wall, um, a rain bar, or rain system, stuff like that. Um, you know, rain systems are, are, I think they're awesome. I love the rain chambers and stuff like that for tree frogs. I just like that sound of rain. It's cool. Um, but these tanks, they, they would fill up so fast with water. You'd be draining, you'd be, you know, the ball valve, you'd open the ball, ball valve every day to drain the water out, which is, would get annoying. But, um, you know, I'm sure a lot of plants would not appreciate how soaked it was either. So, um, I'll just talk mainly about, you know, waterfalls, streams, drip walls, that, um, et cetera. So, obviously, if you have a drip wall or a, a, a stream waterfall, you're not going to need to mist as much because there's a lot of humidity already created in that tank from those features. Um, so, that's, it's not completely necessary to have, um, you know, misting multiple times a day even. You could maybe even do it once a day mainly for the plants, just to certain bromeliads to get filled up with water um, faster than it would with just, a, just your water feature. Um, so there's there's that to keep in mind that you're not gonna need to miss as much if you have a water feature. But for me, water features, I've done them in the past. They are a pain in the butt. I do not like them. Um, just stuff with pumps going wrong and you know the background. You know, you could make it so your pumps easily are removed from the background if something goes wrong. But it's still just it to me they're a pain in the butt um if you could get a, a successful drip wall system working um i could see that being cool you know where it's just a slow steady drip um you know which which could be nice but and also i would only do that stuff if you're really looking to do a display tank even my display tank um i get a lot of compliments on it it, it has a pond but it's just in the corner of a tank um and i made you know the surrounding of the ponds like partly wood from one of the big wood pieces i used and then i used substrate barrier in between the substrate and the uh, um what do i use i don't use the hydroton um the little clay rocks i can't think of what they're called right now but um so i put a substrate barrier in between that so the natural runoff from the misting goes into the pond and it fills up until i until i drain um 
you know, drain the uh, the ball valve, open the ball valve, and drain the water out. So the water the water level always changes on that. But um, you know that's and that's all the water feature I need for that. You know, I don't think a waterfall or a drip wall would make that tank any cooler. Um, you know, I just think they're they're a lot of work, and they they usually seem to have problems. Um, so for breeding purposes, breeding people that are doing breeding racks, breeding tanks, stuff that like similar to what I have. I would never do a like a, a water water feature and all the tanks, let alone any of them. Um, like I said, I have zero in all my tanks. The, the most you're going to get is a pond. Um, so, yeah, that's that's mainly all I want to say about the water features. Um, they're not necessary. They're cool sometimes, and usually for a period of time, and then they break or starts breaking down something, and it just you know, they, they almost make it too huge. If you do have a water feature, you're going to want to have some sort of uh, computer fan uh, located in the tank somewhere to keep it clear. Uh, even even people that use like Exoterras and Zoomeds need to put fans in there because the circulation is just not enough. With even with just a misting system, the the glass never you know clears up. You know, if you don't have a fan in the room, you're going to want to have fans on the in in the tanks or on top of the tanks blowing in in the vents. So. Um, yeah, I guess that, that'll do it for, for misting, water features, um, ponds like I covered. I just do natural ponds. It just, just drains naturally in it. You just want to keep the substrate out of the pond. It's not essential to keep it out, but you want to have some sort of barrier to keep the shape of the pond. Or eventually the substrate's going to get soft, and it's just going to make your pond sloppy and not hold shape. Uh, so that's sort of important. I use sand and gravel in the pond to kind of keep the barrier in place. So... Um, Natural ponds. Um, see what else uh, I could talk about. Drainage. Um, drainage layers are important. Some people use false bottoms uh, with like the PVC and the little water drain in there, and that's fine. I stopped using that because my springtails were getting connored underneath, and they couldn't get out get out from underneath. So um, I recommend either the hydroton balls or um, the clay rocks. <laughs> I can't think of what they're called right now. Uh, I get them off Amazon. Grow stones, there we go. Grow stones is what I use um, as a substrate. The uh, the drainage layer is, is grow stones, substrate barrier, then I use ABG. Um, and to drain all my tanks, I have, um, they're all drilled in the back for um, drainage, so, and it's all hooked up to, I use Miss King line, and I have ball valves all on the end of um, each, each row. So I just open the ball valve and let it drain into the bucket, and I'm done. So. Because if you missed as much as I do, your tanks are going to, the water level is going to fill up about once a month um, to where it's at the ground level or leaf, the leaf litter um, area. So once it gets there, you know, it's, you, know you don't really want to have the water, standing water in the tank. So once I see that, I open the ball valve and drain it till it's empty and then close the ball valve and wait another month, five weeks, something like that, whatever it is to fill up. Uh, but that's usually all it takes. So I think that covers... Pretty much everything on your misting, water features, uh, drainage, anything with water, I kind of covered. Tadpoles, I'll get into a different episode dedicated specifically to tadpoles. Um, and that'll be the type of water, plants, food, all that stuff. All that good stuff. So, um, hope you enjoyed this episode of Water on Frogging with me. So, till next time, which hopefully I uh, can see you in a week or two. Um, you know, we'll, uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.